Millions of American families are facing the high cost of child care, spending around 25% of their incomes on it. And that's for those who can actually find care. Now parents could see costs go even higher as states run out of the $24 billion in stimulus money that was set aside by Congress during the COVID-19 pandemic. According to a study by the Century Foundation, around 70,000 child care programs could close after the funding is gone. That would affect 3.2 million children. It could also cause a loss of $10.6 billion in economic activity. Betsy Stevenson joins us now. She's a professor of public policy and economics at the University of Michigan. She also served as the chief economist at the Labor Department under the Obama administration. Betsy, thank you so much for joining us. Can you, in the largest ways possible, help us understand the connection, the economic connection between child care and the larger economy? Certainly. I mean, I think this is pretty obvious to most people that when you have parents, both parents in the workforce, uh, something's got to happen with their young kids. Uh, with older kids, kids who are, you know, old enough for kindergarten or first or second grade, part of what happens is they go to school during the day, and that provides some child care relief for working parents. But if you've got a kid who's not old enough for kindergarten, you're often on your own to pay for that kind, that child care while you work. And of course, there's also from the child's perspective, early childhood education. But I mean, I think what you're really focusing on right now is why does this affect labor force participation? And to understand that, I think the crucial point is that women's labor force participation has recovered more strongly even than men's labor force participation. And that was also true in the five years prior to the pandemic. Women have invested a lot in education. They're working a lot more, but they can only do this when they have childcare. So with childcare costs uh, set to rise substantially with government funding disappearing, a lot of people are having to look to say, can we afford this higher cost of childcare? And other childcare centers are wondering, can they get in enough revenue to keep their doors open when they're losing access to federal funds? And Betsy, when we when we th think about the 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 women who join rejoin the the, the uh, workforce, I think prime age um, workforce participation is at something like seventy seven percent, about as high as it's ever been. If they have to step out in order to basically take care of their young child and not continue on in their jobs with the health care and all the other benefits that might be available, how does that have long term effects in terms of trying to get back in the workforce? lost uh, ability to train and build skills for the future. Um, give us a sense of the ripple effects. Well, you know, you're asking specifically about the ripple effects for, say, the parent who has to drop out. And that's a very important question. You know, someone who's, if you can't find childcare and you have to quit your job, you know, it can, you lose experience, you lose momentum. It can be hard to find another job uh, at the same rank or pay scale that you were in before. And so that can cause problems. But I'm going to urge you to even step further back and not just look at the hardship of the individual people who are forced uh, to, to quit their jobs because they don't have child care, and to think about the overall macro economy. Because right now, when we look at the decisions the Federal Reserve Board is making around interest rates, they're trying to bring down inflation, and they're trying to bring down inflation without having to shrink the economy too much. What's been helping them has been that expansion in labor force participation. If people show up and take the jobs that employers are advertising, if they're able to take those jobs, then we don't see the labor market contributing to that inflationary pressure, and this makes the Fed's job easier. But if the parents don't have any child care and they're not willing to take those jobs, then we're going to see the labor market start to contribute to inflationary pressure, and that's going to make the Fed's job higher could lead to higher interest rates down the pike. So I think we all need to be concerned about this story, regardless of whether you have children at home, children in child care, relatives that you care about, but realize that this affects our whole macro economy. And so as a last question, um, Professor Stevenson, lawmakers on both sides of the aisle have said they want more affordable and accessible child care, but nothing seems to get done about it or it doesn't. So what What's what needs to be done? Is there a smart way to think about solutions to this in our current political environment? You know, I, I think one of the biggest challenges in our current political environment is that we just don't prioritize the needs of children. 
Um, young children need us to invest more in them. Uh, the research is very clear that early childhood education is going to be an important source of future economic growth. We invest in these young children by getting them developmentally appropriate early childhood education that allows their parents to work right now and that builds skills in those kids that are going to make them more productive when they grow up. But those things are hard for us to do because our politicians tend to be very short-term thinking and those benefits that accrue to the kids, they ignore because they occur many decades down the, the road. So I think the only way for us to get change is for people to insist on that kind of change and say, you know, we want our politicians to do more to support children, the investment in children, and to allow working families to thrive. It's the only way the United States can really move forward with a new generation. Professor Betsy Stevenson, Professor of Public Policy and Economics at the University of Michigan. Thanks so much for being with us. Thank you.